Welcome to a Parallel Project Training, APM Project Management Qualification Podcast based on the APM Body of Knowledge 7th edition. You should be using this in conjunction with our e-learning, podcasts and potentially a tutor-led course. For more information, please visit www.parallelprojecttraining.com. Hello, Michael Tom of Paolo Project Training Podcast with uh, Paul Neighbour and Jan Underdown. Hello, Jan. Oh, hi, Paul. Lovely day today, isn't it? It's, it's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. So uh, we're doing the PMQ, mm-hmm. uh, seventh edition. Yep. So the uh, assessment criteria here, uh, we're looking at organisational roles. So the assessment criteria, explain the role and key responsibilities as project manager. Well, that won't be very long. <laughs> Explain the difference between the responsibilities of the project manager and the sponsor throughout the project life cycle. Right. Describe the other roles in project management, including project users, team members, and the project steering group stroke board. project board, yes. and the product owner. Yes. So that's quite an interesting product owner. Right. So let's go through these in order. Explain the key role and responsibilities of a project manager. Right. Well, as a project manager, I hope you like spinning the plates and that circus act. Yes. Yeah. So really, the, the project manager is utterly accountable for delivering the project, responsible for the delivering the project. Doing the time, cost. The time, cost. And quality, quality criteria. Managing the risks, uh, managing the teams, motivating um, stakeholders. So there's lots of, of things involved with that. Um, so you're actually delivering the requirements for the project, owns the project management plan, which is actually developed in definition, uh, which then we talked about in another podcast, forms the baseline of mm-hmm. the project. And of course, the project management plan involves the who, the what, the why, the when, the how, the what if, and, and how much mm-hmm. around the project. Uh, managing stakeholders. is Project manager is a big people role as well, or can be, um, because stakeholders... We talk about that in other podcasts, you know, influence, impacted by, um, has an interest in, in the project. Yeah, they're supported by the sponsor. That's yeah, absolutely. Point. And that could be a, a key criteria that the sponsor really does support the project manager, or the, the voice um, to the outside world and, and the, the champion. Uh, liaises with users mm-hmm. can be an interesting relationship there, um, mm-hmm. especially when users are too busy with the BAU to be involved with the mm-hmm. project. So a bit of a clamp. And also there is a, a big monitoring reporting. So as we go into deployment, the project managers trying to keep the project on track, reporting progress against those important baselines, against the time, the cost, the quality, the scope, uh, and also watching the risks, issues, changes, and things like that. Uh, maybe escalating mm-hmm. if there's a major issue comes in. So it reports directly to the sponsor for the purpose of the project. Yes, so absolutely. So they might not be their line manager. So you might be putting no, somebody seeing you is not your line manager. Absolutely. So we and need then, to build up good relationships to the sponsor. Yeah, and then overseas suppliers. So Yes, delivery. The They're making sure they deliver on time to the manager. level of quality it's required and maybe meeting progress meetings with them. Yeah. I mean, in the real world, some people may be project managers who oversee the from the supplier and so they yes. may be overseeing the contract from the supplier's yes. perspective not the yeah, we work with organizations that's what they do they project manage Good. on behalf of clients so ultimately they have to deliver the project to yes. within the success criteria, criteria. Agreed in the project uh, management absolutely. plan good and differentiate between the responsibilities of the project manager and the project sponsor so the project sponsor owns the business case yes and is ultimately interested in does the project meet the investment right. criteria does it pay back does it it does <coughs> does, does the benefits uh, isn't it do yes. the benefits of set the investment that i'm making in this that's project? right i'll be accountable for that investment that justification right. on behalf of what we may call a steering group or, yeah or yeah Let's come senior to managers. The steering group. so they own the business case they're mm-hmm. ultimately accountable for the success or failure of the project uh, my uh, if, if i was your project manager you'd be my main escalation point yes they act okay. as an escalation point they support the project manager managing users yes let's check through the list um also key stakeholders especially those key stakeholders maybe senior managers or client side yeah uh, we may not have the ear of those people yeah, they, they, managing su- those. they support the project manager resolving tricky issues. That's they right, identify escalation. business risks. That's interesting. So, so the project manager might be focused on delivery risks. Absolutely. And in this case, we're looking at business or strategic risks. Yeah, because remember in one of the podcasts we talked about you know, environment and the pastel analysis. If anything changes around that area, the project manager needs to know about it as yeah. it could impact on our delivery. 
they hold the contingency funds normally. Yes. Although that's not universal, actually. But, no, it's um, not. They could be the main change authority. Yeah, they approve changes. That's, that's right. That's right. That's right. And they'll arbitrate. So if there's a disagreement between the users and the other stakeholders with the project manager about what functionality we want, it's the sponsor yes, or how who, much scope we who want. arbitrates between them. Yes. Yeah, the, the sponsors. Very good. Very good. So that's the difference between a sponsor and a project manager. Describe other roles in project management, including users, team members, and project steering groups. So let's do users first. So the users use the the output, output of the yes. project and we need them to involved. deliver the benefits we do we do because it goes with, particularly the projects give you that step to change into the bau yeah and so the people are going to be using that output um, of the project to actually use it and then generate the benefits so you think about a new it system the project yeah. will deliver the new it system the users need to actually be able to use that effectively efficiently to actually then generate yeah. the difference the benefits yeah. but we need their input yeah. from requirements what's required what does the business need yeah. to generate that yeah so it says they define what's required mm -hmm. they advise the sponsor on whether the deliverables work or not that's right acceptance criteria acceptance. particularly yes they act as the owner for the finished project so you, quite often they will be the people who will i think of airports are good examples yes you know? The owners of the product are the operations people who work. That's there, right. The users, the Absolutely, and, it's, and the, that will depend on the efficiency the how that team. airport yeah. will actually. So operate. So they're involved in acceptance of those. Yes. That new and what airport. will actually work? Yes. Yeah. They liaise with the project manager about changes. So there may be Absolutely. new legislation mm -hmm. and, and things like that that the operational people know about. Or if, the, if things are being delivered that don't quite work or not yeah. going to quite fit. Yeah, and it says here they all, they need to accept the authority of the sponsor because a sponsor may say, "I know, you know, you might want gold-plated taps, but you can't have them." Uh, you know, uh, so can't have that, can't afford yeah. that. There is a difference between users and end users in my mind. So if you think about an airport, the users to me are the baggage handling, the operations people, the, the checking staff, yes, the t you know. The end users are passengers. Yes. And, and passengers are more like um, stakeholders. Yes, they, they are, but they... they because they, they don't get involved in acceptance driven, or um, change or... They may be driven by um, how, how to actually... The requirements may be driven how passengers have to be flowing through the airport. Yes, yes. Or how we design the yes. actual airport, yes, they, for they, But they don't have an active input. No, to the but there's soon feedback if it doesn't work. <laughs> indeed, indeed, <laughs> indeed. So, I, to my mind, those are like end users, but they're, they're all lumped together here. So, project team members. So, right. project team members are just like little project managers, really. They can be. So for they major they projects. have a they have a, a work package of their own. Yes, to which deliver work two through time them. cost mm -hmm. and quality, and they're responsible for communication and escalation and managing their much, work on a day-to-day -day basis in much the um, same way as the project manager does for the whole they could the actually project. be internal or external yeah like, um supply where well, we split off suppliers and team right. members here in this drawing don't we so suppliers what's the difference between a supplier and a, and a team member suppliers external procurement run yeah, but it's doing the same selection. function they as do. a team member, Absolutely. aren't they? They're, they're delivering because, work. Because when they actually um, do their proposal or, or their bid um, for joint procurement, they're actually writing the, 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 the actual work package almost. Yeah. We will deliver this within this cost within time scales. So they've got the same role as a team member, so yes. they've got the mini project to manage mm -hmm. to deliver to time. And cost often they and do. They go through the project life cycle once the yeah. bid hits the desk. Yeah. And in procurement, we talk about the different ways of... Um, rewarding and paying for those and different contracts yes yeah. so users project team members steering group or project board yes it depends what that is in an organization um a steering group can be um your senior managers your, your, your board of directors um or it can be broken down into your, your regional department type yeah yeah um some organizations especially if they're a little bit like prince two base may have project boards yeah where you say for example you are actually delivering a, a complete new it system across the whole organization is going to hit the marketing, the HR, um, the production, for example. You may actually have senior users on that board representing the user groups. Yeah. That will input right. into that. You may also have on the board, together with the sponsor, um, the, the senior suppliers representation. Yeah, that's a Prince 2 model, isn't it? Yeah, it is a Prince 2 model. And, and um, but the key person on that project board would be the sponsor, the money. Yeah. 
So it's interesting actually because there are different interpretations of steering groups and project mm, boards. But basically, is. it's a it's a group of key senior stakeholders which the sponsor works with to deliver the project. That's right, and often the sponsor is a peer of that that group. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes the sponsor will chair the steering group, and sometimes the sponsor, yes, somebody else chairs the steering group. Or sometimes the sponsor will be appointed by the steering group. Sometimes you may be part of a program appoints the steering group. Yes. So it, it depends. Different organisations do it differently, but and of course. But so you're part of a, a program that is shaped different again. That's true, yeah. So, so basically, they uh, it says they authorise the business case. Yes, sign it um, off. Yeah. But then the business case probably has to go to some investment committee or to a bank to actually get the money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but they the act dosh. as a gateway, a sort of approval That's gateway. right. And, and of course, if your, your, your project is a major capital spend, it will yeah. be a steering group involved somewhere. Yeah. So they act as what they call critical friend, don't they? Yeah. They? So go, no go decision gates. How are you going to evidence those gates? Very good. And so uh, product owner yes. is uh, a, a sort of agile concept. So the product owner is someone who... Uh, acts as a link between the project team and the user community. So they're the, the owner of the product. Mm -hmm. So they bring the voice of the users into the project. So right. they express what, you know, uh, what the screen should look like, what functionality the users are expecting. Yes. Um, so, that, you know, my airport's a good example. You know, you're not going to get the actual baggage handlers and you're not going to get the actual check-in staff mm -hmm. to be... Um, in the project team so what you have is a product owner somebody who's probably the head of baggage handling or the head of operations who who brings information to the project about the requirements of those different um, key users you know so they um, they're also called user groups um, people have called them yes. in it you probably have a user group or, or customer but it's quite a good it. idea to have a product owner especially with changes coming you can actually do the impact analysis of those changes and also look after that particular product yes. we kind of have it with parallel don't we the, the kind of product owners yes um i expect it's more complicated there isn't it because the users yeah, who brings the voice of the user into the development of the courses? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so, yeah, so yeah. we actually say you're uh, the project owner with, within um, the FQ or the PMQ, for example, we actually, the trainers would bring our voices to you. Yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. But this is more the user, so this would be the product owner is the person who, who they work with the backlog, so they identify, I expect that's right, so the trainer would say, these are the things that we need to update on this mm -hmm. course. We have a very slow iterative life cycle, so we update the courses once a year. <laughs> so it's not, <laughs> and the 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 product owners will say, "Well, this is what I think we need to change." Right, right. Cool. Uh, I think that's pretty much everything done. Isn't yeah. It? So the roles, responsibilities, steering group, product steering owner. group, sponsor, project manager, team, suppliers. Yes. Good. And Thank of course, the, the, these things will actually kind of change depending on your context and environment which you're working with. Yeah, these are only very sort of, standard roles here. These are standard roles. Most organisations have much more complicated, complicated yes. pictures than that. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Jam. Okay, Paul. Thank Jam. you. Bye bye. We hope you enjoyed this podcast and found it informative. To find out about our training courses, e learning, or tutor led course, please go to www.parallelprojecttraining.com. Mm -hmm.